it's the yeast I can do. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> one of these people is a master Cicerone and is the only one who has been sworn to tell the truth. Contestants, please take a seat. <laughs> Panel, mama, cheers. And Jason, you are the master of your domain. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Why don't you get us started? Uh, number one, the lady in our group. Uh, how do you train to become a master Cicerone? You taste a lot of beer. Oh. <laughs> okay, number, number two. Uh, how, do you, how do you train to become a master Cicerone? Uh, so there's, there's four categories of training that you go through. Um, uh, you move from sort of beginner to intermediate, advanced, and then master Cicerone at the top. Uh-huh, and number three, what, what, how does the training start? What, like, what's day one, what's the first class? Well, they teach you about the different types of beers, where they're made, how they're made. Number one, Cicerone. What's the origin of that word? Great question. It uh, is an old English word, which meant a guide, uh, and we consider ourselves to be guides to beer. Well, number two, why did you want to even become a Cicerone? I actually uh, lived in England for a while, and I started getting into real ales, because as the English will tell you, that's the only real beer. Uh, then I flew to Holland and Belgium. I tried some different beers, came back to America, and thought, you know, I want to make a living out of this. This is great. I want to bring these beers to America. Mm. Number three? I was a bartender. People treated beer drinkers like second-class citizens compared to wine people. So I liked beer. Seemed like a natural thing to do. I'm just curious, what makes a beer a light beer, number one? A light beer would be made a, a bit lighter by using something like corn or rice, which you will get alcohol from, but very little flavor from. Number two. Less hops. You're going to be adding in um, uh, rice, different grains to sort of lighten the beer, but um, th that would be a lager, generally. Number three, a hazy IPA. What makes, what makes an IPA hazy? Top uh, fermentation. It uh, gives it a little bit more flavor, lighter flavor, not as dank. Dank. Number one, same question. Hazy IPA will have uh, some, some extra grains in it to add protein that makes it look hazy and has a softer flavor profile. Number two. It has a softer flavor pro for profile because uh, more is left in. It gives it kind of a juicier taste than a, a standard IPA. It takes out some of the bitterness. Uh, number one. If I'm having uh, uh, barbecued ribs, what's the perfect beer? What is the best beer to go with barbecue ribs for matching? Um, are we doing dry rub ribs or are we gonna have wet ribs? <laughs> We're gonna go dry rub. Okay, dry rub, number one. How spicy? Uh, medium spice. Uh, maybe Baltic Porter. Oh, I like that Make answer. a note of that, Baltic. I like that answer. <laughs> number one, do you have a favorite beer? I, it would be like picking a favorite kid. It's not really a fair question Mama to ask. Mama was able we to do that. that. Yeah. <laughs> but I got to challenge you on that because, you know, the beers are so different. I mean, you can go from sort of a stout to sort of a pilsner and everywhere in between. There's got to be something on your palate that you prefer. In terms of style, uh, yes. Uh, I, Belgian beers were my first love, so I do love triples. Um, but right now, you, you can't escape the, how great American IPA is. Number three? I love IPAs like everybody else, but it also depends on what you're doing. If I'm water skiing on the lake, I like PBR. Right. Mama, are you a beer drinker? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to end this round right now. This is hard. Yeah. Oh. Mother. I'm going to 